Hi, welcome back. This is the second video in the three-part series on writing your own adventure game. In the first part, we built up the basic framework for our adventure game and we also implemented three commands, look, quit and go. At the end of the first video, we were able to code up a few locations and we were able to move between the various locations. In today's video, we're going to now extend this game and we'll add support for having items. So we should be able to have items in different locations, we should be able to pick them up and we should be able to go to various places and use the items. That's what we're going to code in today's video. Okay, so to start with, let's just put some data out there. Let's say in the home location, we have some items. So I'm going to add another entry here saying items. And for now, we have a rope over here. That will be another dictionary. All right, so this is the way we're going to store items in a given location. Now, the first thing is when we do a look, we should also display if there are any items available at that location. So in case there are no items, we'll just pass and let it go. If there are items, then we'll print the item description. All right. So let's run our game. And now if we do a look here, it says that there is a low lying here. So it is successfully picked up the item and displays it when we do a look. Next, we need to be able to pick up this item. Let's create a new command for that. We'll say get. So when you do a get, we should take it out of this location and add it to our inventory. All right, now we need to create an inventory. Again, we're just gonna keep it as a global variable here. Later on, we'll come and clean that up. Okay, so when we pick up an item, uh, we need to first take it out of the current location. So, Look at the items dictionary and within that, let's pick up the item with that name. Now that item may not be there, right? I might just put some random name out there. Okay, now if the item is there, we go and add it to our inventory. And then we delete it from the current room.
then we'll print out a message to the user that the item was added to the inventory next we need the user to be able to see the inventory so we'll create another command for that this command will show all the items that they are carrying and it takes no arguments So this code over here iterates through our inventory dictionary and prints all the keys of the items that we've got. Cool. So we should be able to test this now. Now if you do a look here, it displays our rope over there. If I say get rope, then it adds the rope to the inventory. If I do a look now, it no longer displays the rope over there because we've removed the item from the location. And if we look at our inventory, it now tells us that we are carrying the rope. Great. Now we need to be able to use this rope somewhere. So let's keep it such that in the garden, if we use the rope, it allows us to go to the bottom of a well. So you are at the garden outside your home. And let's say there is a well here and you feel the warmth etc so currently from the garden you can only go back inside your house but let's say if you tie the rope to the well then you should be able to go down the well as well so we'll create a new location for that Going up the well takes us back to the garden. So here's the thing. We've now got this new location called a well, but there's no way to actually come to this location because from the garden, we can only go inside we haven't actually given any way for the user to actually come down to this well. So we'll do that by allowing the user to come down the well if they tie the rope in the garden. So let's create a function. This is what will get executed when the user ties the rope. Firstly, they should not be able to tie the rope in the home or somewhere else. So we'll check if they are not in the garden. Then we'll say you can't use that here and we'll go back. So nothing will happen. Now if they are in the garden, Then we print out this message and what we need to do now is we need to enable the exit to go from the garden to the well. So we'll take the current room and let's take the exits. 
and we'll add a new exit called down. The new exit will take us to the well. And that's the description for it. So when we tie the rope in the garden, we are basically adding a new exit to that room. All right, now on the rope, rope has a description. We'll create another attribute saying on use and tie that up to the function which we defined above. So when they use the rope, we are actually going to execute that function that we created up there. Okay, we can now create our command use. So we say use rope and we are in the garden. It should then go ahead and allow us to climb down the rope. Now the first thing we need to check is that we actually have the item. If we don't have the rope, we should not be able to go to the garden and say use rope. Okay, now that we got the item, we pick up the on use attribute and execute that function. So if we say use rope, it will pick up this function, tie rope and execute it. So this code is going to get executed down here, where if we check we are in the garden, if we are not, we print a message. If we are in the garden, we enable that exit. Let's try this out. Okay, so first I get the rope, then we go to the garden. Awesome. Go outside and let's say use rope. So now it says you tie the rope to the well. Now if I do a look, we can see there's a new exit down there. It says you can climb down the rope. And if I say go down, it takes us to the well. And that's a new location. Let's say if you pick up something else which doesn't exist, like say X, Y, Z, then it will say there's no such item here. Also, if I get the rope and then I use the rope, but I'm not in the garden. So it will say you can't use that here. Only when I'm in the garden will it actually allow me to use the rope. So that's it for this part. We've added functionality for placing items in various places. We now have an inventory and we can now use the items which will do various things. And all we have to do is code that into a function like this and attach that to the appropriate item. So we'll wrap up this video here. In the third part, We'll do a little bit of cleanup of this code as well as enabling a few slightly more advanced uses.